Mark Thiessen here. You know everything Mark does. Mark, welcome back. Good to be with you. All right, let's talk about first off, Joe Biden. His uh, Mayorka says we're going to build another 20 miles of wall, and we're going to do in the Rio Grande Valley. They really need it. Really? Walls suddenly work? Well, they always supported walls until Trump came along. Yeah. I mean, this was, this wasn't an issue of bipartisan disagreement beforehand. You could, I mean, you could, Chuck Schumer was on record saying supporting border barriers. So it was only because th- this is the problem with the, with the left is that literally if Trump was for it, they were against it no matter what. And so, you know, it's not surprising now that the, 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 they realize that the border is absolutely out of control. It's a disaster. It's a, you know, three years in a row of record high encounters. Uh, the you know, people on the terrorism watch list coming across the border, 1.5 million gotaways, uh, you know, 100,000 people a year dying from, from fentanyl that's coming across the border, which is the equivalent of a plane crashing every single day in America. Of course, it's a disaster. And then now, the, thanks to the genius of uh, of Greg Abbott and some of these uh, border state governors of shipping people up to New York, now you got Kathy Hochul uh, on on Face the Nation this weekend saying Biden has to get the border under control. We got to stop letting everybody in. <laughs> yeah, but I blame you know. Republicans for not doing comprehensive reform. Yeah, right. Sixty two percent disapprove of the president's immigration policy. Really? No idea. Here is a look back at Barack Obama and Chuck Schumer in 2006. The bill before us will certainly do some good. It will authorize some badly needed funding for better fences and better security along our borders. And that should help stem some of the tide of illegal immigration in this country. Construction of a 630-mile border fence that create a significant barrier to illegal immigration on our southern land border. Illegal immigration is wrong, plain and simple. It used to be so easy to work in Washington, right? Right yeah. and wrong used to be obvious. <laughs> It, it, it's well, it's still obvious to some of us, <laughs> but, you know, but here's the, this is what what people are don't understand is that Joe Biden hasn't just reversed Donald Trump's border policy. He's reversed Barack Obama's border policies. I mean, Barack Obama, let's not forget, Barack Obama was decried by the left as being the deporter in chief because he deported a record three million illegal migrants. From, from this country. ICE, deten- ICE deportations under Biden have, have trickled down to almost nothing. Uh, he, he, Obama had record levels of prosecutions for illegal entry and illegal re-entry into the United States. Those prosecutions have stopped under, uh, practically stopped under, uh, under Biden. So it's not just, it, it, they, they, when they say that Congress needs to act, the same laws are on the books right now, the same authorities are on the books right now, that were under the on the books for Trump and Obama when they secured the border. So this is a crisis of choice. This is a situation where the president of the United States is choosing not to use the laws and authorities that are currently on the books that both his Republican and Democratic predecessors used to secure the border. So, so you know, it's a, it's a it's a crisis of choice, plain and simple. Yeah, the attorney general is in Mexico today. Uh, we have the secretary of state in Mexico City. We have Mayor Adams. Here he is. Uh, why he is going to get the message to Mexico City. He's going to be going to uh, Ecuador, and he's going to the Darien Pass in Panama. Listen to him. Cut 10. There's a body of people who are there that are giving them false hopes and false promises. We want to give people a true picture of what is here. A lot of people think buses are the only way, but they're coming in other means, through airports, through people driving in. And so we want to give an honest assessment of what we are experiencing here in this city. We are at at capacity, uh, over 117,000. He's got to do it himself. Now, he better listen because they will tell him that they can't control the people because they believe this is a once in a lifetime opportunity to change their lifetime and come to America. He's got to do some listening, but it just show the desperation he must feel to buck his own party like this. Well, I'd like to see him instead of going there. I'd like to see him go to the White House and talk to uh, talk to uh, and make the case to the, to the president. Remember Hochul I mean, couldn't get the meeting with the president. But I mean, you know, what's the point of being a Democrat if you can't get a meeting with the Democratic president to talk about these problems? I mean, you know, then at some point you got to speak out publicly and say, you know, my president won't listen to me. He's screwing up. He's like, you know, have some courage. Step out and call him out on it. Well, I'll give, and, I'll, I'll give him this. When he comes back, I think that he can't help but be sobered up and understand what is happening, that the people are dying getting here. 
These are the survivors of the one that ends up in New York City. But the people that are being killed and raped or disappearing, uh, oh. that's another story that I think he'll understand. Yeah, so all, uh, over 2,000 migrants have died cr- crossing the border um, in, in the last three years under Joe Biden. 2,000 people. And that's not counting all the people who died on the way. That's actually crossing the border, like died, like drowning in the Rio Grande or getting killed in the process of crossing the border. So, you know, yeah, this is a, this is a humanitarian catastrophe. And the reason they're coming is because they know they get to stay. Yeah, and they get three meals, you know, they get their if, laundry if, done. If you, if you did, what Obama, if you if we had Barack Obama in office right now, deporting three million migrants, uh, illegal migrants, back to where they came from, the, the flow would slow down dramatically. So look, they, let's, they, let's look at past this. What do you think is really happening? I know what we know is happening. We we see the flood, we see the record numbers. We know it's going to get worse. We know the border patrol is overwhelmed. But so does so does Joe Biden know this. So why do you think we have the Secretary of State, uh, the Attorney General? Why do you think we got the Democratic governors? Why do you think the Pritzker, uh, Hochul, uh, Massachusetts all speaking out to one mayor, Brandon Johnson, going to the border today? They know this is political peril. Or is there something they're seeing in the numbers look so ominous that they have no choice in their internals? I, th- I think they probably do see the numbers in their internals. I think immigration is going to be a big issue in, in New York. The, the big problem they face, of course, is that everybody who is the, the most of the people who are concerned about this have left for Florida and other states. So you're never going to get a Republican elected in New York, unfortunately, because all the people who just had, had enough of it are leaving. Um, but, yeah, they're concerned uh, and they should be concerned and Biden should be concerned because this could cost him reelection. Uh, you know, and it's also, by the way, it's also undermining his policies in other areas. I mean, you and I are, you know, despondent over the uh, over the uh, over the reduction in support for Ukraine and amongst Republicans in Congress. I mean, the, what what is the refrain you keep hearing from the anti-Ukraine Republicans? Biden cares more about Ukraine's borders than our borders. Yep. And I look at that and I say they're not wrong. They're not. <laughs> you know, you and, and of course we're a superpower. We can secure our own border. And also help Ukraine uh, push back the Russians uh, who have unlawfully invaded them for all the reasons that we've discussed here. But when Biden refuses to do the former, then it's hard to convince conservatives to support the latter. And so he's actually undermining – he's killing Ukraine with his border crisis. He's absolutely killing Ukraine. He wants to get immigration reform done of some kind of – never going to happen. Uh, we need to, our immigration system is broken beyond Biden's incompetence. We got to fix our immigration system. You can never. It's got to be done in a bipartisan way. You're never going to get bipartisan support for immigration reform when this border, uh, when the border is insecure. So this is, there's downstream consequences to his his mismanagement of this border that you know cross the Atlantic and for, and affect our national security. It's hurting through Ukraine. It's hurting Taiwan. It's hurting. It's hurting lots of uh, U.S. allies around the world. So let's talk about the speaker, the the embarrassment of the century, 147 years, haven't had this happen. But now after 269 days, Speaker McCarthy is out. Jim Jordan made it clear he wants to be speaker. Cut 14. You need someone who can unite the conference and I think just as importantly, unite the conservative and Republican movement across this country. Uh, That's what I think I can do. That's why I'm running for the job. I like the job I had. Uh, Chairman of the Judiciary Committee, Chairman of the Select Committee on the Weaponization of Government doing the work there. But I do think we have to have someone who can bring our team together. I think I'm best equipped to do that. The eight people who voted in a way that I I disagreed with, we got to bring them into the fold. I think I'm best equipped to do that so that we can then go do the things we told the American people we would do for them. So you sold? I mean, look, I, 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 Jim Jordan's a good guy. So is Steve Scalise, they've got a, they've got, you know, they've got good candidates out there, but you know, I got to tell you these, these, these eight knuckleheads, uh, you know, you got, you just had Matt uh, Rosendale came out that he said he was praying for a small majority. Yes. He was praying for a small God majority. God always he answers those small majority prayers. Republicans who are running for election because they, he goes, because he knew that if there was a big majority, if we had a red wave, and this is the same thing for Matt Gates too, all of these idiots, they, they, if we had actually had a red wave, no one would care a whit about what they had to say. The, they, they, these are the, this is the wing of the Republican Party that cost us the Senate, that cost us a stronger majority in the House, and as a result of their incompetence, because they, put, they keep putting these extremists into races they, they, that they can't get elected. And so we've left winnable races on, on the floor, lost our chance to have the majority in both houses, strong majority, killed the red wave. As a result, they're more powerful now. 
And, and so they're ironically because the, the, the people who cost us the midterms are the ones who are empowered now and they've got a gun to hell to, to, the, to the rest of the Republican caucus. And, they pay, and these people are traitors because they partnered with, with Nancy Pelosi and with AOC and with Ilhan Omar – and all these these people to knock out a Republican speaker, and they should. They, they, I, I I I pray that we can win a stronger majority, and this doesn't hurt us, so that we can make these people as irrelevant as they ought to be. Well, the part of that guy here's Matt Rosendale and his genius. He wants to be the next senator from Montana. Cut eighteen over my dead body. The most important characteristic to me is to have someone who is trustworthy. That I know when they make commitments to the conference. Uh, as far as what we are working on, when they leave that room and they meet with Hakeem Jeffries, Chuck Schumer, or Joe Biden, that they stand by those commitments to the conference. And then I also want to make sure that we have someone that has an actual vision where they want to help the Republican Party to go. And, and they have the ability to incite some enthusiasm to bring the rest of the party along with them. And and so I'm going to make sure that that we get done. All right, there you go. Uh, I can't listen to him anymore. I so, can't either. And, and by the way, so Ken McCarthy lied to him, evidently. Yeah. You know what? These people need to go back and listen to Schoolhouse Rock, okay? <laughs> because they understand is that I'm just a bill. You know, you know that how this, how a bill gets made. You have to control. It has to pass the Senate, and it has to pass. It gets signed into law by the president. And when you have a four-seat majority in the House, you don't get to dictate everything you want. And if you want to get anything done, you have to compromise. And if you want to cut – look, I'm as, as, as outraged about the $5 trillion in spending that the Democrats ram through as any conservative is. You know how, you, how they did that? They went out and won elections. <laughs> and they got an, and they got a strong enough majority. They won the White House. They won the House. They won the Senate. Right. And they passed their spending. If you want to repeal their spending, you have to go and win the House. He says we're thirty three trillion dollar in debt. We got ability to do that. Yeah, we're thirty three trillion in debt. House rock. Yeah, and Speaker uh, and it's Speaker uh, whatever Speaker McCarthy had brought it up. Lastly, President Trump is being totally screwed in New York City. I think people are seeing it. They're going after what he says is inflated inflated properties that he has. Inflated, hurt nobody. There is nobody that got hurt. There's nobody that says he didn't pay his taxes. There's nobody that says he didn't pay his bills. There's no one say he didn't pay his it's insurance. Crime. So you're, it's so severe and ridiculous. Ruth Marcus writes in the Washington Post, essentially, you can go after Trump, but you're overdoing it. And I'm just paraphrasing it. And that is a that is a not a conservative columnist in the in the, in the paper you write for. Yeah, I think well, so many people who would just say, "Well, I'm done with Trump," and they might have been uh, thinking about voting for him, voting for him in the past, are now going to his column just because they're seeing Jack Smith see him hold a gun with his with his faint with his picture on it and saying, "Oh, I want him sanctioned. I want a gag order. The judge wants a gag order." They're seeing the way he's treated, and it's helping him. Your thought? Thirty seconds. 91 indictments. The Unabomber had only 13 indictments. I mean, 91 indictments, federal court, state court, civil court. I mean, these people, it's just the left always goes too far. And here's the thing. They want Trump to be the nominee because they think he's easier to beat. But they are, by, their, by their conduct and by their overreach, they're actually – they need to remember 2016. <laughs> <laughs> they thought that they, they thought there was no chance he was going to get elected in 2016. They 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 are you know, and they did this in the midterms. They did this where they where they where they ran. Right. Uh, they helped mega candidates get elected in House and Senate races because they know that'd be easier to beat, and it worked. It might backfire on them in tw- in, tw- uh, in 2024, and we could get another Trump president. Every time we talk, I think they got closer to reality. Mark Thiessen, we never have enough time. Thanks so much. Take care. All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.